Photo Maker is here and it gives you yet another way to create AI generated photos, paintings, avatars, or whatever of anyone in any style within seconds. It's super easy to run on your own computer or as a hugging face space. Plus, there are already a plethora of comfy UI versions should you wish to use any of those. However, before I get into all that, let's take a quick look at what they say it can do on their project page because a picture paints a thousand words. Uh, or is it the other way around now? Right off the bat from their video, it looks like one image and a prompt gets you a pretty decent representation of the person. Their realistic photo examples are pretty varied and I think you can see straight away that it's able to style the image quite a lot as well as the varied hairstyles and clothing. If you've used IP Adapter before, you might have found that struggles to change certain features without really turning the weight down. Talking of stylization, they have even more examples showing off a whole range of styles from comic book to 3D and line art. Pretty impressive so far, I think you'll agree. Their recontextualization examples show how you can put a person into a spacesuit or a purple wizard outfit. Plus, you can also use paintings, sculptures, or old photos as your source. If you want to giggle, then young Elon or female Trump may be more your thing. And you can even go a step further by using a variety of input images, like um, Donald Musk. Comparing it to other methods such as Dream Booth or IP Adapter, it certainly looks like Photo Maker has a decent quality, especially when given software such as Dream Booth takes way longer than the few seconds needed by Photo Maker. So, what do you need to get this running on your own computer? Well, let's take a look. Being SDXL, you'll have the best experience with at least 10 gig of VRAM. And as always, the best operating system to use is Linux, followed by Microsoft Windows and then finally Mac. It's written in Python, so Anaconda or Miniconda should be your go-to for easy virtual environments, with installation being the bog standard pip install minus r requirements.txt. Followed by a quick pip install of their repository, nothing mind blowing or difficult there. If you're not yet fully into AI and so are still using Microsoft Windows, then do check out the modified repository for that operating system. I found it to be only marginally slower on Windows, taking just two seconds longer than on Linux in my tests using the default example, so nothing too much to worry about there. Installation on Windows is also practically identical, though personally I'd ignore the suggestion of installing System Python and just use Anaconda or Miniconda as normal. Totally up to you of course, but I prefer an easy life. The main differences here are that you'll need to have a Visual Studio redistributable installed, there's a slightly different install command for PyTorch that makes sure that you get the GPU enabled version and some slight changes to the requirements file. And finally, for Mac users, they should make sure to check the provided information for how to use GPU on Mac M1 or M2. As mentioned, while there are a bunch of comfy UI custom nodes for this, which I'll get to in a moment, I figured it'd be a good idea to test the actual app in case there are any noticeable differences in generation. So let's crack this thing open and do some testing. The model files will all download automatically for you, so nothing difficult to do there. And the SDXL model it will use is RealViz XL3, which you can also download directly from Hugging Face. While you can't change the model directly in the Gradio interface, you can indeed use whichever model you fancy, which is much easier to change once we get to Comfy. One very important thing to note when using this is the use of the IMG keyword. You'll need to include this in all of your prompts, making it a good idea to test one of the examples first. Let's use Newton to start with. Here you can see the prompt has sci-fi close-up portrait of a man, IMG, so there's that keyword, wearing the sunglasses in an Iron Man suit. You can click submit and that will start generating. While it's doing that, you can have a look at the advanced options too, which is where things like the negative prompt, sample steps, style strength, guidance scale, and other options are hiding out. Our Armand Newton has generated, so let's 
crack one of those open in a new tab to get the full resolution. There he is, not too bad. The features are pretty similar, though he does now have rather curly hair. But what about if you want to use your own images? Well, be sure to check out their tips at the top for that. One image is okay, but more is better. They don't do any face detection, so the face should occupy the majority of the image. As I've mentioned already, it's vital to have the IMG trigger word in there. And the additional tips down here suggest that you may wish to prefix it with more information, such as Asian woman, if using Asian faces, for example. Actually, just before I swap those images out, what happens if I do that with Newton? After all, the project page did say it would work. OK, so I've changed the prompt slightly there to Asian woman image. Let's regenerate a Newton and see what happens. Oh yes, Newton looking good there. Very nice hair. OK, let's pick some of our own images by clicking remove and upload new ones. I've got a bunch here in a directory and you may recognize this lass from my Reposa workflow as she's fully AI generated. Let's also change that Asian to African as per their suggestion. All right, that's not too bad, but how about changing it up even more as I'm not particularly keen on those goggles. Plus, there's a whole bunch of style templates to test out here as well. I've removed the photo related things from the prompt and I've got the style template comic book. So let's submit and see what happens now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's handled the style change nicely and I guess her features are fairly similar. How about if I use old big eyes this time instead, but also see what it can and can't change. So now in the prompt, I'm trying to give her ginger hair and to turn that smile upside down. Wait, that doesn't rhyme. Never mind. Right, so it's been able to change the hair without issue, but some small problems with changing the expression, much like you might have found with IP adapter. Maybe upping the guidance scale a little bit then? Perhaps it will follow the prompt more then. And uh, all right, so let's push that to seven and put smiling into the negative prompt too. Mm, nope, not really. I guess as she's smiling in all the images, that's a tough thing to change. One other thing to note is that PhotoMaker has a couple of Jupyter notebooks there, and one of them is a style demo. It's very similar to the Gradio interface we just looked at, but this one instead uses a different model and there's also another Laura in there too. Talking of Lauras, I guess it's time to try this out in Comfy UI where we can do exactly that. There are at least three different options for this, but so far I prefer this one from Zozozo. Zo Zo. According to their video, it's faster, supports custom models, and you can change the sizes on top of using those Lauras as well. If you want to use both of their version 2.5 workflows, you're actually going to need three sets of custom nodes, two of which you can install via Comfy UI Manager. If you open Manager and go to Install Custom Nodes and then search for ZHO, you'll see a whole bunch of repositories there. The two extra ones you'll need are Comfy UI Gemini and Comfy UI Portrait Master ZHCN. Unfortunately, the Portrait Master node is purely in Chinese, so in order to save any confusion, I'm just going to use a slightly customized workflow which runs locally and doesn't need those extra nodes. To install PhotoMaker itself, however, you'll see it isn't listed in the manager. This means you'll need to install it using the instructions which are provided on their GitHub repository. Once again, this is super easy. Just CD into your custom nodes directory, copy and paste the git clone command, change into the directory you just downloaded, and once again, run the infamous pip install minus r requirements.txt. Uh, don't forget to restart Comfy UI, of course. Note that this does use a current version of the Transformers package, which could potentially be downgraded if you subsequently install an older custom node. Just something for you to be aware of if you find it suddenly stops working. It's a good idea to grab the LoRa file as well, which you can download from Civit AI and goes in the usual place for LoRas, which is models LoRas. 
For the photomaker.bin file, I created a new directory in models called, wait for it, Photomaker. And the file itself you can download from the Tencent Arc Hugging Face webpage. You can use any base SDXL model you fancy, but I'm sticking with Real XL 3.0 here because why not? The image processing node gives you two options. One is for a file path, that's path input, and the other one is direct input, which is the image there over to the left. If you did install that original Gradio app, you'll also find Newton and Friends in the examples directory for Photomaker. As we used Newton to start with, let's copy and paste that path into there. There we go, so I've got Newton man as the path and mode. I want to change to path input. Okay, so that's everything pretty much set up as in the Gradio demo. We've got RealViz XL3 as our SDXL model. There I've got models photo maker, that directory I just created, which has the photo maker v1 bin file in. We've got the SDXL LoRa there, more artful version one with a LoRa weight of 0.7. We're doing a batch size of two, just like the demo. Okay, let's see what Newton looks like. Okay, not bad, only slightly faster than the Gradio app at 25 seconds for the two images versus 28, but hey, let's click on this one to make him a bit bigger, see what he looks like. All right, yeah, still pretty decent quality, I think. I've also changed the prompt there from man to woman, of course, but all right, not too bad, not too bad. All right, we'll try one more. This time we're going for a painting and a low poly style. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. It's got the slightly curly hair. I can see the resemblance, not too bad. And just so we can see what difference it makes when you have one image or multiple images, I've got this data set here of four. There she is, one, two, three, four. We'll pop her in there as well and copy and paste that new directory in. Okay, so first of all, just with that one image, direct input, that gives us these two images. So there's number one, there's number two. And now if we change that to path input, so we're using four images this time instead, as you can see, it's still pretty similar, but generally speaking, it is better with more images. Well, I know I prefer using the Comfy UI version, but do note the repository is being updated pretty frequently, so expect things to change in the future. And hey, if you got this far, maybe you'd like to watch another Nerdy Rodent video.